Hey guys, today I am sharing with you my recipe for my guava cream cheese rolls. These are absolutely delicious. No words to describe how amazing these are, how blessed and how grateful I am for this recipe. Let's just go ahead and get started. In a bowl here, I have some warm water. I took some water and I placed it in the microwave for about 30 to 45 seconds. Heated it up. I've added in some granulated sugar, and now I'm adding in one packet of yeast. I will have all the amounts listed below in the description box for you. I'm going to give that a little mix, and we're going to set that aside. We're going to wait for that yeast to start activating. And into a bowl here, I have two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour. To that, I'm going to add in an eighth cup of granulated sugar. and about a quarter teaspoon of salt. Just a pinch of salt. And we're gonna go ahead and mix together our dry ingredients. Now we're going to go back to our yeast and you can see that it is nice and foaming up beautifully. We're going to go ahead and add in some vanilla extract. I'm using about a good tablespoon of vanilla. You really want that flavor. As well as I'm going to go ahead and add in one large egg. I'm going to mix that egg and vanilla with our water and yeast and sugar. And then we're gonna make a well in the center of our dry ingredients, right in the middle of the bowl, and add in our wet ingredients. Make sure I get all of that sugar out, if any has uh, sat at the bottom of your bowl. And then I have six tablespoons of unsalted butter that I've popped into the microwave a little bit, just so it's sort of softened. Maybe about 45 seconds or so in the microwave. Get that nice and softened and sort of softened, sort of melted, as usual. <laughs> If you've watched most of my recipes, as usually I pop it in just for soften, it gets to melted. But you know what? This is what home cooking is all about. It's about using what you have and making the best of it. And trust me, it's going to be perfectly fine. We're going to mix together our ingredients until it becomes like a nice shaggy dough. I'm using a spoon to incorporate everything together. And once it's all come together, we're going to go ahead and switch over to our counter. We're going to just plop our dough onto our countertop. You want to make sure that you have a dry countertop and a nice smooth countertop for this. This is a really super soft and kind of tacky dough. So we're going to be working really quickly when we're kneading this. And also you want to make sure again that you have a nice clean smooth countertop. If you don't have a smooth um, countertop to knead this on, you can use something like a cutting board. What I'm doing is starting in the center of my dough and using the back of my wrist to press out on it, bring the dough back in, and I'm turning as I'm going to knead this. Now again, this is a tacky dough, so I'm not pressing hard at all on this dough. I'm being very gentle. And I'm just kneading and turning as I'm going, pressing out and pushing it out and kneading and turning as I go along. Now I'm showing you here how gently I'm pushing out and bringing it back in. If I was to press really hard on this all the way down to the bottom, chances are it can stick to your counter and become a little bit messy. So just do it briskly and you'll be fine. 
We're going to continue kneading this for about five to eight minutes. It's going to become nice and smooth. And it's just the perfect dough. It's super, super soft dough. It is just perfection. So blessed and so grateful for recipes like this. My little ones absolutely love these rolls. So you can see that my dough is coming together. It is smoothing out really nice. It's becoming nice and smooth. After about five minutes or so, it's beautiful, it's smooth. It is kind of tacky. So again, if it's really unworkable, depending on where you are, the humidity and the temperature, you can add about a tablespoon of flour. I really don't recommend adding too much flour because you'll end up with a dry dough. And that defeats the whole purpose of these rolls because you want a really soft and fluffy dough. The easiest way and the best way to do it is to just move really quickly with it. So I have my dough here after five to eight minutes. I'm forming it into a ball by pinching all the sides and bringing it under itself to form it into a nice ball. It is a little sticky, it is a little tacky, but it's not actually going to be sticking to your fingers. Into that same bowl that I had all my flour and stuff, you can use a clean bowl if you want, but again, I like to reduce the amount of dishes that I've got to do. So I'm just cleaning this bowl out as best as I can, and I'm spraying some non-stick cooking spray. You can brush some vegetable oil, or you can brush some butter on this if you don't have non-stick cooking spray. Placing my dough in there, turning it around so all sides are coated, and we're going to cover this and place this in a warm area until it triples in size. We really want to give it some time, about an hour to an hour and a half to two hours, depending on how cold it is or warm it is where you are, and let this really get some rising going on in there. Now we're going to make our filling, which is so amazing. Oh my goodness. I have some guava paste here. You can get this brand. There's Goya brand. It will be found in the international section of your grocery store. I have found it in almost every grocery store I go to. I'm also going to add in some cream cheese to a saucepan here. Again, I will have all the amounts listed below. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut up these little pieces, uh, the guava, into little tiny pieces. Cutting them up will help um, just make it break down faster as we're cooking it. So cutting it up into little tiny cubes, as well as I'm going to cut up my cream cheese into little tiny cubes. It's just going to help this cook down a little bit faster. We're going to go ahead and add in some water. I'm using a quarter cup of water. I'm just going to add that in. Everything will be listed below. And I'm going to go ahead and add in some water to my saucepan. Give that a little gentle mix, and we're going to go over to our stove top and about medium to medium low heat. You don't want your heat on too high because you want this to cook and melt down. So I'm going to give this a little gentle stir and it will just start melting and breaking down beautifully. You do want to sit here and stir this every minute or so. You don't want anything to stick and you don't want it to burn. So after a few minutes, the cream cheese is melting down, and I'm going to want all of that guava to completely melt down. And it's going to become this thick, beautiful filling. So I'm just going to continue until all of my guava pieces, kind of mash it up if you have to, <laughs> until it all melts down beautifully. So now that is thoroughly melted, we're going to set that aside to cool completely, and then we're going to go ahead and get our dough. So after our dough has nice and tripled in size, doubled or tripled, we just want it to really rise so it develops some air and it's nice and fluffy.
I'm gonna go ahead and plop my dough onto my countertop. And we're gonna spread this out. I'm using my hands because I really don't want my rolling pin to stick to this, but you can definitely use a rolling pin, just be kind of gentle with it because it is, again, a tacky dough. And all I'm doing is just um, pressing it out and stretching it. It's such an amazing elastic-y dough that stretching it just works perfectly. You want to make sure that all of it is even, all sides of the dough are even, especially around in the center. And we've got our amazing filling here that is nice and cooled. We're going to place it and we're going to spread this out on our dough. Now, if you want, you can run this um, filling through a sieve if you want to get rid of any chunks of cream cheese. Uh, it's more for presentation. It doesn't really affect the taste. I left a little border around the edges, and I'm going to go ahead and just roll this up, starting from the long ways here. The longer part of the dough, I'm starting to roll that up, and then I'm going to pinch and seal the edges as well as the sides of our dough. Make sure and get the ends. Just seal it up, tuck it in, do what you gotta do. I have a baking tray here lined with parchment paper and I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna use a um, pizza cutter to cut this. You can use a knife, whatever you want. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this in half. I'm going to work with one half at a time and get about five pieces. So I'm just going to cut this four times so it will give me about five pieces. You can do bigger or smaller depending, but this is a great size. We're going to place it on our tray here. And what I like to do is when you cut them, they become more of a rectangle shape. So I like to take it and actually take that rectangle shape and just turn it into itself to make it like a circle. Just like so, I'm going to place it on my parchment paper. Again, I'm going to show you here how I just take one and just kind of turn it into a circle. It's going to be a little bit messy, but that's okay. It's going to be worth it. So we're going to cover this up with some cling wrap this time. You can place a towel over it and place it in a warm area to, again, double in size. You also want to make sure your oven is preheated to 350 degrees. I have some powdered sugar in a bowl here. I'm adding in about a teaspoon or so of milk, and we're going to mix that together until we have a nice thick glaze. You want a thick glaze because it will hold its shape when you place it on your buns. If it's too thin, I find that it just uh, kind of melts into there and I don't want that. I want a little nice layer of glaze on top. So after these have doubled in size, about 45 minutes or so, we're going to place it in our preheated oven, which is at 350 for about 25 minutes and this is still super super soft it's going to be a light golden color on top still really you know not not totally brown we don't want to dry out our dough and you're just going to place your glaze on it it doesn't matter if your buns are warm or not your glaze should stay perfectly fine if it's nice and thick and that is it. These are best served warm with a nice cup of tea or coffee or whatever. And oh my gosh, they're so good. I'm telling you, I am super amazingly blessed and grateful and thankful to God for all of these amazing, wonderful recipes. My family loves them and I love them. And I hope that you enjoy them as well. The inside is super soft. You can see the swirls of guava and cream cheese running through. Oh my goodness. Gracious me. If you guys try it and you enjoy it, let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.